trace of the French. The French adore military leader Bonaparte and at the same time tend to treat Napoleon I coldly. This monument is more of a tribute to his military genius rather than his imperial majesty. Here, if you bow your head, you will see the place the famous Corsican found his peace. Paris, cathedral tomb of the national residence of the invalids. Napoleon's ashes rest in six coffins. The first one is made of tin, the second of wood, the third and fourth of lead, the sixth of ebony wood and the sixth of oak. All this is enclosed in a sarcophagus which is made of quartzite. He died far from his beloved French people before he could fulfill his most ambitious project, the conquest of the East. But strangely enough, there are still tangible traces of Napoleonic schemes in the world. Stranger still, many of them remain in Western Kazakhstan, at least according to one version. Chapter 1 Eastward Bound A camel loaded with baggage wandering in the Narin Sands. In front of it is a study with a globe and a leather chair. Jangir Han Historical and Ethnographic Museum under the University of the same title. Uralsk, documents, books, photographs. Naturally, most of them are copies and household items containing the life of a certain family, state and era. This is a fragment of Jean Girhan's study. Of course, the chair, the lamp and the stand belong to the respective time period. Jean Girhan had furniture in the empire style. Back then, everyone imitated the imperial government including the highest elite of Russia. This is Napoleon. Apart from the furniture, there is nothing imperial or supernatural here. Not a single trace of an attempt to transform the world. Such intent was quite possible. The bouquet horde, led by Jean Girhan's father, was destined to play a major role in this act. The assumption is directly related to the most contentious and controversial project a military campaign of Napoleon and Paul I to India. But it really exists, not only the idea, but also the coalition of the two emperors, a Russian Tsar and a future leader of France. And what was the role of Western Kazakhstan in this plan? The question was raised by Kazakh historian Aspandiarov in 1947. He wrote a monograph on the history of the Bouquet Horde. Paul could see the settlement of Astrakhan steppes and pacification of Kyrgyz Kaisak peoples as a favorite factor which could aid him in his personal military plans. As a result of their campaign to India, Napoleon and Paul intended to counterbalance the position of power in Europe and Asia by terminating the power of Great Britain and its colonies in the East and the largest colony of the mighty Great Britain was India. The plan of the expedition was extremely simple. Two armies, 35,000 French soldiers under the command of General Massin, and an equal number of Russian representatives, including Cossacks, were to meet in Astrakhan. Combined military forces would then cross the Caspian Sea to Persia, the city of Astrabad, bypass Afghanistan and reach the Indian provinces. Despite his sense of adventure, Napoleon had serious doubts as to how the campaign should be carried out, how many ships should they have, and what is the best way to transport artillery and ammunition through the desert. This project was described on paper, but the author is unknown, because it wasn't fitting to an emperor, either Napoleon or Paul I to write such kind of document. All stages of this campaign were calculated to have an element of surprise. The discussions were kept secret, which is why there are almost no materials on the subject matter. Verbal queries were used at the time. With frightening speed, they rest through Europe to verbally convey the message he was given in St. Petersburg. He then memorized the reply of the Parisian recipient and rushed back. Napoleonic campaign to India via Egypt had ended in failure. 
The chief reason was lack of knowledge of unfamiliar conditions, the terrain, the climate and local customs. To ensure the troops had horses, forage, provisions and information, it was vital to have allies in the steppe. A strategic point, a strategic horde was required, and that horde was the Buki Khanate. The formation of the Buke Horde was a vital part of a chain of events of gigantic proportions, an epicentral part, if you will. A lot of things depended on the decisions of Sultan Buke. Chapter 2 The Strategic Horde It was a mutually beneficial agreement. Nomadic Kazakhs needed land. Incidentally, for Sultan Buke, one of the younger sons of Nur Ali, the Khan of the junior Jews, it is the only way to assume the Khan's power. He repeatedly appealed to the Emperor for permission to occupy the territory between the Urals and the Volga, which remained free after the escape of the Kalmyks in 1771. Naturally, it was a very dangerous thing for the royal, since in the Caucasus Russia bordered with a great number of nomadic peoples, many of whom were quite boisterous. There was also a constant struggle with Turkey, Russia's nearest neighbor in the southeast. It was also interested seeing this territory inhabited. According to the official version, the creation of internal autonomy was supposed to aid the Tsarist government in dispersing the population of the junior Jews. Simultaneously, it was going to solve the land problem. The area between the Volga and the Urals is the Kazakh Atamikin. Other objectives were made perfect sense. Transition to a settled way of life made the steppe policy far more manageable and predictable. The Bouquet Horde was supposed to become a model of state formation. It was set an example of the ideal state governance to other Kazakhs. The timing was perfect. Secret projects, actual reality and one man capable of bringing Napoleon's plans into action. Sultan Bouquet was by no means an ordinary figure. He was a diplomat a visionary, and most importantly, he could find a common language with different people. Sultan Bouquet's advisor was Sufi theologian and scholar Said Baba. He was a very mysterious individual. He visited Saudi Arabia, Baghdad, Afghanistan, India and Turkestan and possessed the kind of information that was rare for that time and undoubtedly quite useful for both the French consul of Napoleon and Paul the Great. Whether Bouquet collected data for them or suspected there being a connection between the High Order and the campaign remains known. But according to some historians, this version is more than plausible. One. Traveling deep into the steppes and constantly roaming, he was establishing useful contacts in Russia. He was clearly gathering information. I was able to establish that he had a network of informants. Those were the early days and months of Kazakh intelligence network. He had informants in Russia and Georgia. Exceptional favor and friendship which Paul I bestowed upon Sultan Bouquet stemmed from the Emperor's personal interests. It is a known fact that after terminating his alliances with Austria and Britain, Paul withdrew his ambassadors from Vienna and London. After that, he became friendly with Napoleon and, having made peace with France, began preparing for a war against Great Britain, acting against the wishes of the ruling circles of Russian nobility. The 11th of March, 1801, Paul I signed the fateful document. The rescript intended for the military governor of Astrakhan and the vicegerent of the Caucasus can be quoted here. It is with great pleasure that I receive Sultan Bouquet, son of Nur Ali Khan, head of the Khan's council of Kyrgyz junior horde. I grant him the permission to roam anywhere he wishes and as a token of my goodwill, I award him with a gold medal with my portrait to be worn around the neck on a black ribbon. Chapter 3, The Fatal Finale 
it is known that Paul had sent Cossack detachments to conquer India as early as January, so that the wheel of new history did not begin to spin on that particular day, but it did stop in only a few hours on the 12th of March. Half past 12 at night, drunk on champagne, 10 or 12 officers, the exact number is unknown, burst into the bedchamber of Paul I. The emperor was hit on the temple with a gold snuff box and then strangled with a scarf. Thus, the secret plan of the two emperors came to an end. It was one of the first documents signed by the new emperor. Alexander Pavlovich cancelled the campaign. And once again, a courier was racing toward Kazakh steppes on a special mission to bring home the troops dispatched to India under the command of General Arlov. During the reign of Paul I, the concept of the keys to the door of Asia assumed a concrete form as a specific search for an overland route to India. More precisely, the overland route had already been found. All they had to do was start moving forward on this path. It was a well thought out and quite feasible project. It's all in the records. 22,000 Cossacks, which equals to 40 Cossack regiments, were insufficient for the conquest of India and successful passing through these territories. But on the way of this army lay only moderate-sized fragmented countries. Afghanistan was a unified state only on paper at the time. In reality, there were but a community of small principalities, always at war with one another. At first glance, His Imperial Highness Prince Charles Napoleon does not look like his famous ancestor. Tall, peaceful, an engineer, a historian and a Bonapartism specialist. He says such ventures are quite in the spirit of the French commander. Corsican uh, blood, you know, was in his body, so Corsican people are very um, nervous and anxious, you know, and very radical always. Um, the very strong character, I would say. Um, so he was, um, he was uh, not a calm man. He burned, you know, his life. Whether or not it was a coincidence, there had been assassination attempts on this life. In December, on the eve of the New Year, 1801, one way or another, each member of the secret union understood that this game would be played without rules. Issue. According to a more popular version, England was involved in a conspiracy against Paul I. It is assumed that the conspirators had already been paid, but it is unknown whether or not the money was received. For Napoleon, it came as a shock, a tragedy. He had great hopes on the ally of France, and they were destroyed overnight. They say that after learning about what transpired in St. Petersburg, Bonaparte vehemently explained something like, Those damned and scrupulous Englishmen, having missed me on Rue Saint-Niquet, then nevertheless managed to shoot me right in the heart. There in St. Michael's Castle of St. Petersburg, India no longer needs the army of Massin, just like Malta has no more need for the Russian garrison. The fatal blur of the snuff box stopped a chain of world events but launched a project to create a unique state formation, the Bouquet Horde. The Bouquet Khanate was created as a temporary base for the Indian campaign. But it continued to exist afterward, despite the lack of information on Sultan Bouquet. He is known as an incredibly talented politician who managed to seize the moment. It was very difficult for a Kazakh Sultan to take advantage of the realities of not only Russian but also European politics. Paul and Napoleon. It didn't matter who was the author of the project. What mattered was who could execute it. Bouquet could, albeit with some provisors. He never became a fully independent ruler. On the world map appeared a model pattern of the exemplary Khanate. But it was no longer wholly Kazakh, it was Eurasian. East and West united, Asia and Europe came together and coexisted quite peacefully for 76 years under the name of Bouquet Horde. <laughs>